Um, so, hi, all. Hi, audience. Uh, thanks for tuning in to this Innovation Cafe session. Um, if you didn't catch me in one of the uh, other sessions, I'm Stuart Connop from the University of East London. I'm one of the researchers on the Connecting Nature project, and I am your facilitator for this Innovation Cafe session. Uh, just in case this is the first Innovation Cafe session that you have dropped in on, uh, I've got a couple of quick housekeeping notes before we start. Just to let you all know that the session is being recorded. So uh, best behavior. Uh, also, these cafes are designed to be very informal sessions with lots of opportunity to chat. So, uh, so don't be shy. In terms of the format of the session, We'll begin with a short presentation. Uh, this will be followed by an opportunity to ask questions and to discuss the subjects presented. For the Q&A and discussion after the presentation, can I please encourage participants to ask questions with their cameras and microphones on if possible, to try and avoid the informality and anonymity of virtual conferences. For this, you can click on the blue tab in the top right corner of the presentation screen to request to share your audio and visual. For the discussion, uh, I can turn on a maximum of nine cameras at a time through the moderation control. So I'll try and switch cameras on and off depending on who is wanting to speak. So please do re uh, request to share your cameras to help me with this. For those of you that are less bold or, or are still in your pajamas, um, there's also the option uh, to just use the chat function to add comments or questions. So I'll try and monitor this as the uh, session progresses. Uh, and I believe, I was told you can also vote on your favorite questions, but I'm not, I'm not quite sure how that works. But if you can work out how to do it, then please do. Um, unlike the main session, uh, your microphones can be turned on if you're on screen. So could I please ask attendees to mute themselves if you're on screen and not speaking, just to make sure there's no unexpected background noise or feedback loops. Um, this can be done by clicking the microphone symbol at the bottom of the screen. And lastly, I apologize in advance if I have to cut the conversation short at the end of the session. But uh, these sessions are running back to back with no break. So I've been told that I have to be absolutely punctual in terms of wrapping things up. So I, I might have to do it quite quickly. Right, that's all from me on to the real business. Um, this Innovation Cafe is part of the Reducing Risk session. And we're fortunate enough to be joined by Maria Mavrudi, uh, who works in the Urban Development and Funding Strategies team of the Municipality of Pavlos Melas in uh, Thessaloniki in Greece. I have the pleasure of working with Maria and also visiting Pavlos Melas and Connecting Nature. And today she's going to be presenting the nature-based solution approach being pioneered as part of the project, transitioning a former military camp into a metropolitan park. Um, over to you, Maria. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Hello, everyone. I'm going to present uh, our nature-based solution project uh, I'm going to share my screen. I hope that everyone can see my screen. Yeah, yeah, we can see it. That's okay. great. Huh? Okay. So, right, things. Yeah, no, it's okay. Well, uh, Pavlos Melas is a municipality of North Greece located at the west side of Thessaloniki. It has a population of almost 100,000 and it faces a lot of challenges, the main of which is the addressing of issues of continuing poverty, air pollution, low percentage of green area, and lack of opportunities for economic growth. The absence of urban planning system and policies during the development period result in built environment without public open and green spaces, 
So Pablo's Melas X camp of 33 hectares uh, and uh, with uh, 300,000 people living around is the nature based opportunity for our municipality. Pablo's Melas camp uh, was established by the Turkish army and it was used during the Nazi occupation as a concentration execution camp. And uh, it is a very important site to community memory and local identity. Nowadays, the camp is an urban gap contributing to the, uh, the deprivation of the area. In order to reverse the situation, the municipality focused on a strategic regeneration planning with increased production. Our vision is the transformation of a historic site into a multifunctional green space, public and open, a driving for cohesion and well-being and a level of development for the city. At the Metropolitan Park of Pablos Melas, yes, relax, participate, have fun and come back. Based on our strategic plan, the project will be implemented in this Space entitled Open Space Development includes creation of basic infrastructure, soil rehabilitation, greening, lighting, creation of walk and cycle paths, kiosks, rest points, accessibility and security upgrading, etc. Where we are in the process, 12 million euros have been committed for phase one from a regional, a regional development funds. The rest will be on contribution. The tendering procedure for open space regeneration is in progress. Next phases include further space reformation, restoration of buildings and setting of uses on them. I have to notice here that no additional buildings are going to be constructed in the area. Except public uses as uh, the new town hall, museums, environmental awareness and sustainability center, other uses that could attract private investment, such as sport and leisure, culture, social, creative and nature-based economy, could be foreseen for specific location and for a limited number of buildings. The whole project is estimated to cost about 6 million, million euros and funding leverage actions are in progress. Considering the nature-based solution scale, it is recognized that an intervention is a multi-year costly and complex administrative program. An opportunity-based approach is adopted focused on the program development in phases according to the approved strategic plan. The high potential of the site as a natural resource, historical site and driving force for urban sustainability. Perspectives for nature-based solution in post-COVID period. And uh, last but not least, uh, connecting nature project to where we are a, 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 a follower city. We know that we have a lot of work to do, but we are very proud for our first uh, big scale nature based solution project and uh, for our uh, Pablos Melas Metropolitan Park. Thank you very much. I'm here for any questions. Uh, thank you, Maria. That was um, that was excellent. It's re really interesting to hear about uh, a, a really large scale project like this. Um, often, um, such spaces are under pressure for development, so the nature based solution tends to be a small part of the space. So it's really interesting to hear such a large space that is is completely being regenerated into a nature based solution. Um, I see Dorothy uh, is requesting uh, to join the panel. Let me just uh, get her on board. And anyone else who, who wants to ask a question or get involved in the discussion, please do um, ask to share your audio and, and visual. Hi, Dorothy. Hi, yes. Um, thanks, Maria. It was a really interesting presentation. Um, and it actually um, it reminds me of a project in Mannheim that's still undergoing, Mannheim, Germany, um, to convert an army barrack base 
um, also into a public park and community center. So I think it's a really great initiative. My question was about, um, could you tell us how difficult the procurement of the land itself was um, since it is military? Was it difficult for the city to obtain it? Um, and like, what were the hurdles in that process, if any? Uh, the difficulty uh, was uh, basic uh, in the first phase uh, during the contracting uh, the, uh, for, uh, from uh, the ministry uh, to the municipality uh, during uh, the, the concision procedure uh, of, uh, the, of the of the ex uh, camp. Uh, now concerning uh, the contracting, uh, after that uh, we have the terms uh, of contract uh, and uh, we are based uh, on uh, these terms uh, but uh, difficulties are uh, concerning nature-based solution terms uh, of uh, contracting for uh, for the future of the, of the project that's great thanks um, okay um, I, I see Matthew Finkel's got a question in the chat do you, do you want to join us to ask it yourself um, or, or shall I try and uh, try uh, try and put it forward? Okay, um, I, I don't see any <laughs> any request to join the panel, so um, I'll, I'll ask it. Oh, oh no, yeah, here he is. Thanks, Matthew. Hi, Maria. Hi, Matthew. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering how much pressure is on this site in terms of climate change, water conservation, etc. Given where you are, obviously your climate is changing quite a lot. So, how are you coping with that within the overall design? Yeah, uh, during the first phase, uh, we have uh, included uh, the planting of uh, six thousand new plants. So we are creating a, a green uh, space uh, that is uh, very important uh, for the place. Uh, we also have adopted. Uh, um, any principle concerning uh, uh, water management, um, but but not uh, any technological solution. Uh, we are trying to plan, but um, we are going maybe to to adapt a more technological uh, solution that when uh, we will uh, implement the the second phase uh, with uh, buildings um, uh, renovation. Uh, and uh, always uh, we are trying to use um, renewable energy to create uh, um, water tanks uh, for water um, selection, yeah. uh, not uh, to, to use uh, hard materials and uh, to, to uh, I can say, to reduce hard materials uh, from, uh, from the area. We will uncover a lot of um, yeah. of uh, area, a big area. Of, uh, this okay. Thank you. I'll have everybody else. You can have my uh, 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 Anyone else with any questions? Uh, I, I'm I'm more than happy to start a discussion with Maria, but um, I, I I get lots of opportunity in connecting nature. So um, if anyone else has any burning questions. Please do put them in the chat or or request to join our, us on screen. Okay, um, I don't see anything at the moment, so um, I, I have a question for you. I, I think it's very interesting. Um, in the conference so far, um, that there's been lots of examples of um, small space rede redesign um, and, and in connecting nature with some of, a lot of our partners that's been tended to be the focus of nature-based solutions these small underused spaces in cities uh, and this idea of uh, kind of redesigning them and on those small spaces there's lots of competition in terms of the the, the competing demands on the use of the space now, it seems that you're in an amazing opportunity where you've got this very large space to deal with. Um, and there's a real opportunity for kind of blending uses and really kind of focusing this multifunctionality of, of nature based solutions. So, but I wondered kind of how, how you're managing this, how you're identifying kind of local needs, um, and then prioritizing those in terms of the use of the space. 
Yeah, thank you. It is a, a difficult <laughs> question because uh, uh, we had a lot of thought before um, adopting uh, connecting nature uh, framework and um, uh, nature-based solution um, methodology in our project. But uh, I think that uh, it is uh, an opportunity for the sustainability of the project uh, to, to be designed and implemented as a nature-based solution. Uh, we are trying uh, to, um, add, to, to implement step by step and uh, we are doing uh, by learning uh, because uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, different uh, things uh, to, uh, to connect uh, together. And so uh, this is the reason that uh, we work uh, uh, the project uh, by fa uh, through phases. Uh, during the first phase, uh, we work. Uh, uh, we have uh, only the green the, the green park. Uh, we face uh, as a, a, a green park uh, creation, and uh, we are trying uh, to to focus uh, on uh, its uh, step uh, because. Um, it is difficult to do at the same time to, to create um, social and economic uh, values uh, during the environmental values uh, development. Uh, so at the first phase, uh, we focused on the environmental aspects of, uh, of the project, especially, and uh, our co-creation uh, with uh, the citizens uh, is focused on that. But at the same time, we are working on the governance model development. And uh, through this, uh, on the social values uh, the creation. And um, I think during uh, that steps, uh, we will have the opportunity to create economic values. That I think uh, it's um, the, it, the problem is the capacity of the municipality because uh, it is not uh, very easy for us uh, to, to implement such a big scale uh, project uh, capacities. Okay, thanks. Yeah, um, so Carol, uh, Carol McLean's popped a question in the chat, which um, is, is possibly one that I would have liked to ask as well, um, which it relates to this, this idea that you uh, presented about the sensitive history of the site. Um, which seems a kind of a critical point in relation to the redesign. Um, and she's interested in knowing how you're, how you're dealing with that sensitive history aspect um, because of its um, the, the kind of legacy and the, pa the past history of the site. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, we have uh, the approvement uh, for uh, all the, um, the, the related uh, ministries, uh, the, the culture ministry and uh, concerning the monuments and uh, everything else and uh, uh, we have also with us um, uh, all the the stakeholders uh, the, the the main stakeholders uh, um, let's say we have uh, the the german diplomacy agency of thessaloniki uh, and uh, we work uh, with uh, them uh, uh, for uh, for the the, the history of the place and uh, we are trying to respect uh, uh, all, all uh, its history uh, character uh, of course we want to promote this uh, this uh, its history and um, uh, the local identity and uh, maybe we are trying uh, to create a brand name for our, our municipality i think it's an opportunity uh, to, to create a brand, a brand name uh, based, uh, based uh, on uh, this um, important uh, historical uh, monuments in history of the site. Okay, and just to add to that, um, you, you mentioned this uh, kind of, kind of co-creation approach with the local community. I, I wondered if um, you could provide more detail in relation to that and whether the kind of sensitivity of the history of the site has come up particularly in those co-creation workshops. Yeah, uh, it is uh, um, because it is uh, um, the, the history of uh, the place um, uh, is connected with a uh, bad moment. <laughs> 
So uh, it is not very easy to to to, to have a lot of uh, people people that don't. Not to bring uh, the the negative aspect of uh, of uh, the place, but uh, to keep uh, the me the memory and uh, uh, the memory of the place, the historic memory of the place. And um, I think that everyone wants to respect the place, but uh, at the same time to create uh, a place uh, for um, for positive thoughts. This is, uh, I think, uh, the feedback for uh, all the creation uh, meetings. Uh, we are trying to remember, but uh, we we are going. Uh, we are making the next steps for a future without the bad uh, moments uh, of um, uh, of our. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for that. Um, uh, I so I, I I can keep asking questions. Um, <laughs> I, I I find it a fascinating project. I could probably ask questions all afternoon. Um, I, but I wondered if you wanted to take this opportunity to ask the audience anything at all, or or are you happy for me to carry on grilling you? Yeah, uh, there are a lot of things that uh, we would like uh, to discuss uh, maybe with um, other uh, uh, people uh, that uh, have uh, experience uh, with uh, big, uh, big uh, uh, green spaces. Uh, one of our um, basic question is how we have uh, to to secure uh, the, the safe the safety of uh, of the place uh, how it is going to be um, a safe public space for everyone we want to create an open park but uh, i think that uh, we have bad experience uh, with vandalism so we don't know where we can find uh, the um, the equilibrium between uh, these uh, two uh, these two issues okay uh, that's great and um, so anyone uh, audience participation time uh, is there anyone in the audience that particularly has any experience or insight they would like to provide in relation to this concept of um of how you kind of balance the kind of redesign of a space but and management the safety and aspects and reducing antisocial behavior I, um, I, I know from, from conversations I've had recently with another one of the Connecting Nature partners, the, um, there was very much kind of experience that um, that they, when redesigning a space and, and getting that kind of use and regular use and um, it have large kind of numbers of people using a space, that, that there, there can be a natural reaction in terms of reducing antisocial behavior and, kind of, and, and and creating that secure, safe environment and reducing vandalism. But I, I wonder if anyone in the audience has a has any a similar experience or any other experiences they want to share. I'm not. I'm not getting any uh, <laughs> any uh, any requests to join the moderation panel. Uh, if people do and they're too shy to join us up here, um, perhaps you can you can add things to the chat. Uh, if you, if you, particularly if you'd like to connect with Maria, um, I know uh, uh, there is, a, as part of the expo at the event, um, there is a booth around the uh, Metropolitan yes, Park redesign. So I, I, I don't know. Uh, will you be manning? Uh, will you be there in the booth at all, Maria? Uh, yes, uh, uh, I will be i am during uh, the networking uh, sessions uh, but uh, i'm not sure for tomorrow i don't remember the okay the but um th there's definitely more information about the the park there if people want to explore that and then find out a bit more and also um you can connect through the chat with maria at any point if you uh, if you come up with any questions that that you haven't managed to ask during this session okay well then um uh, that basically brings us up to time. I just like to thank you, Maria, um, for that really interesting presentation. It's a, it's a, a brilliant project you're involved in. And uh, I, and, uh, beyond connecting nature, 
I, I look forward to keeping in touch and finding out how it progresses and then hopefully uh, getting to visit the site one day. So um, thanks to the audience, thanks for those questions and, and uh, very much thanks to Maria for a really interesting session. Okay. <laughs>